I just played a uh, new game, Island Dangerous, and I'm uh, a little bit overwhelmed because of the Oculus Rift support. Oh wow, it's fun, isn't it? It's so amazing because uh, you, it's, it feels like you're there. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I played the original game when it came out. Uh, uh, the, the very first island for, I think it's uh, C64 oh, in Amiga. In, oh, on Amiga, right, okay, so yeah. that was like 1984, 1985? Like years ago. Oh, and wow. Uh, I had an Amiga 500 and yeah. uh, so, uh, I, I loved that game. Uh, <laughs> but you did all this game by yourself, didn't you? Yeah, uh, no, um, I did Frontier by myself. Okay. The original League game I did with Ian Bell. Okay. Um, yeah. Back in 1984. So, was it different? I mean, Nowadays, uh, games are like, uh, we want to make everything bigger with uh, more yeah. words and more crazy stuff and so on. And they got uh, a, a big stuff of uh, developers and um, mm -hmm. like 500 people for thing, for open world games. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, uh, I know, we've done them. <laughs> yeah, and you, you have done it basically a few years ago with two people. Uh, how did you achieve that? Well, I suppose it was easier then. The BBC Micro had 22k of memory. Yeah. So that's a tiny amount. That's less than most emails. Yeah. Um, on when we did when I did Frontier, which was 1993, yeah. it had to it had to fit into 512k of memory, mm -hmm. and in fact, it fitted also on a 720k floppy. You know, so it's tiny amount compared to today. And I think the answer is um, a lot of care to make the code small, but also we used um, a technique called procedural generation. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so it's a wonderful magical technique where <laughs> you can you can get you can create vast amount of content with a lot less art input. So I mean, if an artist now draws a panel of uh, say a rusty metal panel, yeah, um, you wouldn't draw every pixel. You would use a noise generator. Okay, that's procedural generation. Okay, that, that means that like for example when I um, explore a new planet. Then it was put together by different variables. You, you got yeah, that's right. like uh, X, Y, and A maybe, and then you set some numbers. Yeah, and uh, it's you don't know. It, it means that you basically don't know by yourself what is in the game, isn't it? Yeah, because the game, isn't that great? It, it's amazing because the game uh, writes itself. No, I wouldn't put it quite like that. Not but yeah, you're right. I mean. But having said that, also, you know, the, the, the whole night sky is accurate. Yeah. Every star in our real night sky is in the game. Wow. And not only that, all the stars you'll see in a telescope yeah. are in the game. That's so we've got amazing. something like 160,000 star systems that are real. Yeah. And then beyond that, we go the whole galaxy, the 4 billion, 400 billion star systems, <laughs> are, are in there procedurally generated. That's because even with something like Hubble, mm -hmm. you could only see 40, 50 light years, the faintest M-class stars. Yeah. Um, and beyond that, they can't be resolved, but you could see them as a sort of, a general sort of, almost a mist. Yes. And yes. each one of those is a star. So what we do is we make those procedurally, but they are real, because we know roughly where they are and how many there are. Yeah, that's amazing. Is it, do we get feedback from fans, from people who uh, like to look in the stars, so to speak? Oh yeah. Uh, that um, are uh, used to look into the sky through telescopes and so on. And um, do we get the feedback that they think this looks realistic? This looks um, like like in space, basically. Yeah. Well, what we've done is that the, the night sky comes from the real data. It's not a drawn backdrop. And what yeah. we did is we had to add dust to get it to just to exactly match the night sky. And so we yeah. know where the dust is and how much there is. And that's based on essentially empirical data because yeah. we've got it to match. It's amazing. Uh, so you added you added all the space stations to it and uh, all the sci-fi stuff, but basically it's our star system. It's our real galaxy, yeah. That's great. bit overwhelmed by all these uh, possibilities I got. Uh, basically, I started the game, I flew <laughs> through the space station and I was like, wow, space? Yeah. But what now? This time, it's, it's a few years later, it's a bit different to design a game because people um, tend to have some kind of lead mission-based stuff and so on. Um, are, are you afraid that uh, uh, this 
the, the new island is um, too complicated for people nowadays? No, um, we're writing the game for ourselves, and by ourselves I mean people at Frontier and all the backers as well, because we want to make this sort of game. We're, we're we are writing a game that we want to play because we're also gamers. You know, that's why we added support to Oculus because we wanted it. Yeah, and we yeah. thought, well, actually, we're the target audience. We, we want yeah. this. But also, um, I like games to be more complicated. I think a lot of games have been a bit dumbed down on console yeah, yeah, right. just, just to make it easier to play. And actually, people don't need games to be dumbed down. Yeah. We've, I've put teenagers in front of this game. And they've gone, yeah. cool. Isn't this great? You can put power to your shields. You can put power to your engines. You can All of those things, because those things have... You know, they, they have existed on PC games in the past, mm -hmm. but they've been removed. And so it's great to bring them back. And because we're not going with a publisher, we don't have those pressures yeah, to dumb it down. So basically, you don't have the uh, this this uh, over overused guide in the game. Like uh, nowadays, a lot of games are like do this. Do that, no, I know. We this. don't. No tutorial. No tutorial. No. I don't want a tutorial. It's great. So basically, the player has to find out. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. It's but it's it's actually quite straightforward. You can work it out. Yeah. And also, you know, looking at uh, how a lot of people play games now, they find a problem. They go straight onto YouTube. Yeah. So we will have guides on YouTube if people want them. So, um, but you're not forced to play it, and I think that's nice. You know, your car doesn't have a, a silly tutorial that says now <laughs> press the left indicator. <laughs> it right. would drive you mad. Yeah, right. So, so you have to learn the controls. You have to learn the game, the roots of the game, and so on. Yeah. You can. So, um, is there? I have to ask this, but is there some kind of story in it? Is it? Um, yes, but the story. I mean, with a massive multiplayer game it makes yeah. no sense for everyone to have to rescue the princess yeah. and to have a really guided story through it um, because having such a guided story everyone having the same experience wouldn't make sense but we yeah. do have a story because the story is about the player's life the player's experience of what mm -hmm. they're going through so people with if depending on what your rating is and all this thing people will approach you at a certain level and say hey yeah. do you want to join us we've got this really great thing for you to do and that is essentially how the story goes mm -hmm. and how the story unfolds you get so much story just emerging from how human players interact with each other okay. that you get that level of richness and we're sort of seeing it in the beta already I don't know if you followed the thing the progenitor cells and all that sort of thing I'm sorry I just saw it today oh, for okay. the very first time oh come and join us yeah. you can play it live now you know so um, so that's starting to unfold I mean we yeah. the, 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 the way the development's going we, we're, we're two weeks into beta mm -hmm. And so we've, we've got a game now, but it's the way, I liken it to building a house. You know, we've, we've built the foundation, so the first thing we did, we've got the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay right. Yeah. Get the ships to feel right, um, get it to play well. And we added to Oculus Rift at that stage, right early on. Then we yeah. added network support, because getting a game to work on the internet is a bit of a challenge yeah, with the alpha. Yeah. Uh, then we've added you know, the gameplay loop and all this thing. We've just built it gradually. Mm -hmm. So on the house analogy, we've built the foundations, we've built the walls, we've plastered them. And now we've got a house, a watertight house, and we're yeah. starting to put the furniture in. That's the gameplay. So, you know, so more and more rich stuff. Is it that, that you also learn from the beta, from the feedback, how yeah. the game will progress in the future? Absolutely. You, you, you really don't know what's going to happen Well, next. the great thing is, yeah. we, we're doing, I mean, it's almost like social experiments. We have, yeah. uh, so <clears throat> we've already got it in the game at the moment. There's a sort of... Uh, there is an uprising in a place called Erinin, which is a federal world. An uprising? Wow. Yeah, and it's, well, it's sort of a terrorist group yeah. who are fighting against the Federation, because it's a federal <laughs> world. Yeah. And they've done things like, like they've, um, there's something called progenitor cells, which is yeah. something that people use to keep them young. Mm -hmm. um, sort of a futuristic Botox, if you like. Yeah. And um, it's generally older people who buy it, richer people. Yeah. And this is, a, so we started off saying there are rebels and they're, you know, the, the Federation has a warship there that's yeah. helping. So you get a lot of the players siding with the rebels. Oh, But then yeah. we now say they're terrorists, they pollute these progenitor cells. That's the most profitable trade good. Ah. And it was made illegal because it was, it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. So they made it illegal until they'd identified the supply that had been polluted. Yeah. So no, I understand. And so, so. it changes and, and, and then people are starting to say, oh, they're terrorists. Oh. Oh. Maybe they're not so good. Maybe we'll side with the Federation after all. <laughs> you know, so it's this sort of thing that um, we also have the idea of, um, you know, you, you have a, a colony where you, the people are basically in slavery, okay. mining ore and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that makes the ore very cheap. So the player has the choice of siding with the oppressors. Okay. But then their next spaceship will be a lot cheaper. Wow, this sounds... Or do you side cool. with the, the, re the, the poor oppressed underclass yeah who are working really hard and are trying to get out from under the impression. You know, do you, do you run guns to them? 
Yeah. And I, because I think that's fun as well. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting dilemma, and I think people will side with the oppressors because they want their spaceships. Uh, they'll justify it to themselves, saying, "Oh, they're not real people down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. This is just a game." So, so, so basically, you can um, you can join these uh, fractions, or you can. You can do that already. Yeah, so you can sign up. You can so you can you can see the fight happening, and they, yeah. they will say you get something um, called a combat bond, mm -hmm. where you'll say, "Right, okay, I will. I'll join you for a short time, and I will get paid for every of the bad one of the bad guys I take out." Yeah. By bad guys, I mean the people against those, because okay. everyone is someone's bad guy, and yeah, that's such right. a conflict. That's, that's, that's right. For you personally, um, you you did this uh, uh, game uh, in the past, the first Islet and the Frontier, and it seems so. You also did other things like Dogs Life. And That's so right. On. Oh, very, very proud of Dogs very, Life. Very, very great game, by the way. Oh, thank uh, you. I, I hope you will do another one. Because it would be nice to do that. Well, we did Connectimals, which is sort of the spirit, yeah. but it was because, a different kind of game, because, I realized. Because this Mellow version was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love because, that. Because uh, I love this, uh, all the spell stuff and so on. I hope you're doing a second one. But what I think is you always come back to Islet because it's. Uh, is there something about space that is fascinating for you? I'm, I'm fascinated by astronomy, but I also like the freedom. Okay. You know, the, the, the freedom of going anywhere. I love the idea. I'm one of the people who's going to head out into the stars in the unknown or fill up my ship with spare parts and all yeah. that sort of thing. And I just, want to, I just want to go out there. I love the idea of meeting other players out there, you know. Yeah. Sort of, um, a Dr. Livingston, I presume, moment where you, you find someone long, long way from home and just see, yeah. what, see who they are, see how they got there. That's great. So, so uh, when you got the possibility, would you fly into space, like um, to the space um, station or something? It seems a bit tacky somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's one thing having a ship and heading off into the unknown. Yeah. It's another thing just doing it as a, a tourist jolly. Okay, so it's like um, it's nice to see into the universe and to yeah. imagine flying around, but uh, it's something totally different. Yeah, I, I love the sense of wonder. Yeah, when you see um, that in the game, you see I don't know Saturn or something like that, yeah. a giant gas giant with all those rocks and things like that, the majesty of space. Yeah, but I don't. I'm not. I, I, I know what you mean. It would, be, it would be nice to see the Earth from orbit, but mm -hmm. the, the, the huge resource cost of doing that doesn't feel right somehow. Some, it's not yet anyway. somehow. That's right. Yeah, yeah, because it's all the open white open space. That's and right. Yeah. You don't know what's happening. That's right. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank You're you very, very welcome. Lovely talking to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, one clap for synchronizing. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>